I've got a few questions for you um, to, to start out with. So have you, oh, and put up your hand if, this, the, um, if the question applies to you. Have you ever heard anybody saying that developers are not good at design? Yeah, probably right. And keep your hands up, please. Um, more than 50%. Keep your hand up if you have said that yourself. A few hands go down, but a few are still up. So, kind of my first hypothesis is we need to design. Now you can put your hand down, Grant. Yes, thank you. We need designers on a project. Next question. Have you, have, so, so don't put up your hand right now, but answer again with your hand up. Have you had a smartphone in 2006? That was the year before Apple came out with the iPhone. Nobody. Oh, one person. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, are you still using that smartphone? It was a Palm Trio and... Okay, so kind of unfortunately not by choice, I guess, that you can't use it anymore now because it can't connect anymore. Or would you still want to use it these days? Okay, well, you're breaking my hypothesis, which is good. <laughs> but when we had a similar talk at Catalyst, kind of nobody said that they wanted to use their smartphone from 2006 anymore. It would have been kind of one of the oldest style ones. So. We typically want the new and the contemporary to work with. Now, what does that have to do with the topic of my talk today? Well, let me tell you a little story. In the beginning, and my beginning starts in 2006, um, Penny Leach, who worked here as a developer, committed or uh, made the first commit into the Mahara code base on the 27th of September 2006. Mahara is the software that I'm working on open source ePortfolio tool. Already a few days later, a theme was mentioned because we are creating a web app, therefore it needed to look, so it needed to have a theme because it needed a graphical user interface since you needed to access it on the internet. At that time, pretty much everybody on the project was a developer. And, um, but we kind of knew, or Catalyst at that time, I wasn't on the project, knew that we needed a logo. Project needed a logo and thankfully, our current designer, Yvonne, was hired um, just about a month later. And one of her first activities was to actually come up with a logo for the project. Now, what do designers typically need in order to come up with a logo? They need a design brief. And like so many design briefs in the industry and everywhere else, it was short and snappy. In our case, remember it was 2006. The design brief was make the logo Web 2.0 shiny and make it pop. So that's what Ivan got. And we got a shiny Web 2.0 logo. It even came with the mirror effect. And it popped because we also had some green in there. So it had a bit of a color. And so over the next few years, um, we made some slight changes to the logo because at some point Web 2.0 was not quite that modern anymore. And so we lost a bit of the shininess. Um, it still popped, but other than that, it kind of still was very recognizable as the very much same logo. But then in 2016, after having made some iterations in the software, new releases, um, kind of had different icons in there, and we really thought, well, this logo isn't quite us anymore. And so we had um, made a quite a big rebranding activity and came up with this iteration. So it's very different from the other two. I mean, you still see the beginnings in it, so it's not a complete departure of the logo, but it has a very different feel to it. And what we did at that time as well is not like what we had done before, just create a logo, but we actually developed an entire brand so that we know 
who we are, what we want to do. So along with the logo, we also had a branding font so that when we created documents, we knew what font to use and didn't have to choose one of the 16 million that are out there. And the font goes with the logo. And we also created a whole bunch of colors. And when I say we, I really actually mean our designer. And so instead of just having pretty much three colors, one darkish brown, and then a darker green and a lighter green, suddenly we had a whole range of colors and we knew when we wanted to create a presentation or put more than one color together, we actually could choose from a whole range and we knew they were going with each other in tone and warmth and all of that. And the logo is also quite versatile. We can have it with the word Mahara, but we can also have it on its own. And there's a slight difference to it, as you can see. And we also have a mobile app. What do you think that logo looks like? Yes, very similar to the actual Mahara logo. And therefore helps us also to stay in the family and help people to see, yes, this application goes with Mahara itself. And when we have events, we build on the logo and therefore really keep everything in one. And nobody really ever has to think about, well, what logo am I going to come up with today? And can people still recognize it that it is the same product? And so we do that with all the branding that we do for merchandising, for um, banners, things we put on t-shirts or mugs and the like. But in this case here, we even kept our old logo um, purposely because we wanted to show the connection to the past and not entirely lose it. And it's just really fun to also have these characters. And we also use it for social media as um, imagery, as well as thank you cards that we are sending to our contributors for every single release. And they all kind of show our own way what we look like. And as you can see also on my computer screen, we have a decal, um, big sticker really, that is also branded and that make flows into the same um, brand and um, looks very much of how we want to be perceived. So now what does that mean for your projects? Hopefully, potentially. Um, I think they are four elements that we should be considering. And the first one really is to define who you are, who we are. Because unless we know how we want to be perceived, how we think our audience wants us to be perceived, we might be missing the boat. So if you want to cater to a certain community and you know they work with crazy colors and very have a very comic book style, then you might want to adapt something similar to really appeal to them. Whereas when you work with children, you might have a completely different visual language than if you were working with retirees. Um, it also depends very much on the in the culture that you're operating, I find, um, because that also defines which colors you might be using more predominantly, which colors you might avoid, and also what your what your app could look like. So really define who you are and then apply that to your project. And don't just stop at the logo. Really think about the entirety of what you're creating. Think about, well, do we want to put things onto a, um, onto t-shirts, other merchandising, maybe even letterhead, business cards and all of that. Develop a brand, don't just develop a logo because it all kind of needs to go together and needs to gel. And I find very importantly, do not be afraid to make changes over time. As you've seen kind of just on the three big iterations of the logo, that was over a time period of, um, yeah, a little over 10 years, um, 15 years coming on this year. And um, so roughly every six, seven years or so, we thought, well, we might want to make a change. And in between, there are just small changes that are not as visible. But don't be afraid of it because our aesthetics change. And that was the second question. Are you still using the um, smartphone from 2006? Could have also asked, are you still using the same apps from 2006? Because sometimes we look at 
software and think, oh, that looks a bit dated. Do I really want to work with that anymore? Whereas when something new and fresh comes along, then that is oftentimes more preferred. And we do that very unconsciously, oftentimes not even knowing why we like something compared to something else. And lastly, do not forget your th to thank your designer because they make a huge contribution to the success of any project that you're working on because it is those very unconscious um, notions that we have that help us also sell a product, help us um, be recognized and uh, help the product be, be used. And it's all those unicorns that work on a project that actually make it happen. Thanks.